Hi everyone, welcome back to Aura Life. Today we're gonna to talk all about ARC Music Festival, what to bring, and any last minute tips to attend. Consider this your little mini guide to help you along the way, so let's get started. I'm a rave mom and mom in her life and I create content around self-care, raising festivals, and today we're going to be talking specifically about art music festival that's taking place in... By the way, look at this shirt. I got this shirt at um, <laughs> Sweet Child's Mafia last week and of course I'm wearing it backwards because the front just says tour on it, but this side was the coolest side. It says paradise again, so I was like, I'm going to flip this around. <laughs> I don't care. I spent some money on this. I want them to see the cool side. <laughs> so excited to be back with my people, with my Chicago house family. Um, last year was my first time attending. I had a ball. This is such a unique festival. It celebrates Chicago and the origins of house music and just the global experience that house music can bring. And I'm excited to be back and I am excited to be attending all three days this year because last year I only attended one day. I did two days at North Coast and I did one day at ARC. This time I'm going for the full experience and I cannot wait. I wanted to hop on here to give you a quick guide on some of the things that you can, should, should consider when you're going to this festival and how you can prepare. So if you haven't seen all of my other videos recently, I've kind of done a little Chicago music festival series and I did a quick guide for Lollapalooza as well as North Coast. So the format of this video is gonna fall very similar into those main, I think five categories. What to bring, how to get in, food and beverage, what to spend, and then how to plan your day. So um, the what the bring section, I'll also be talking about what you should wear. So first off, Art Music Festival is a day festival, ends at 10. If you don't already know about Chicago, there is a city noise ordinance, so that's why a lot of festivals will end a little bit early. They don't go that far into the night, but don't worry, there are a lot of a lot of um, after parties, especially for Arc Music Festival this year. So if you want the party content to continue after the festival, you certainly can do that. Um, with that being said, because it is a day festival, you do have to do, deal with some inclement weather as well as the heat, um, the sun, whatever it may be. Um, so it's something to be mindful of. So that leads me into our first category, which is what to bring. Now, because this festival is a city festival, and honestly, the grounds are so tiny, um, I don't think you really need a lot, to be honest with you, to go to this festival. It's very similar to a Lollapalooza festival in that I don't even necessarily think that a hydration pack is necessary. Now, for me, this year, I will be bringing a hydration pack because I am a new mommy of a second little baby girl, so I'm going to need some extra supplies to make sure that I'm good. Um, I am breastfeeding. So anyways, there's a lot that, of stuff that you need for that. So I will be bringing my hydration pack and I think um, of course the lunchbox packs is most ideal because it's an anti-theft hydration pack. But I think you can get away at this festival with just bringing a fanny pack or a sling. I recommend the lunchbox uh, snack packs and slings. It's perfect for Lollapalooza, I brought my sling. And actually last year for ARC, I brought my sling too and it was perfect. You can have a little spot for you know, a seltzer or your drink or a water bottle in the front and then in the back it has a space and pockets for all your valuables, very similar to a um, fanny pack. You can put it in on a variety of different ways and everything is protected because it is anti-theft so there's extra locks on it. It's right next to your person so um, you want to make sure that your things are in your possession. Nobody wants to deal with theft at a festival and the lunchbox has you covered with that so I would say if you're looking for an anti-theft uh, bag, make sure you check out the lunchbox. I'll put the link down below. Um, I also have a code. So if you use code Ashley, you actually save on a free skin if you're interested in getting the hydration pack. But like I said, I also recommend the fanny pack, uh, which they call the snack pack and the sling. 
so with that being said um, in my sling I brought you know photo ID um, last year and the, the tickets were through my phone so I have my phone with me this year we are having wristbands so make sure you bring your wristband um, you know your card um, I, I said your phone you know anything like a uh, chapstick gum things that you normally would even if you want to bring some wet wipes for the porter potties all of those things that you can bring that you typically bring to a, a music festival but I don't necessarily think a hydration pack is needed just because most people just or, ordered the drinks there. The drinks were a little expensive last year. That was one of the, the things that was people most complained about. I think a high noon was like 12 or $13, which is yikes. And I think the water was like somewhere between four to eight dollars, something like that. So if you do want water, you could bring your hydration pack. Last year they didn't really have um, a water um, refill station that was apparent. They did have one, but it was really hard to find. And I heard that this year they're gonna really make um, that better for everybody. So if that is something that you're interested in, um, make sure that you bring your hydration pack or you could bring in like a refillable water bottle and do it that way. That's probably what I would do if I wasn't bringing my lunchbox um, with me. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, just the small essentials and everything. You're in the heart of the city, so there's resources all around you. So I don't think that it, you need to be extra prepared for this festival. Um, it's a very small venue. You're not gonna be walking around a lot, but I would say to definitely, definitely wear comfortable shoes, just because you are gonna be um, standing up. There is, we're not in like a stadium setting kind of like uh, North Coast is, so there isn't a lot of seating. So wear comfortable shoes. And the one thing that I would say to bring is a mask. It can be, um, you know, a regular mask that you wear, you know, like a surgical mask, or it could even be a cloth mask, but there's a lot of dust at this festival. And um, I do remember, you know, blowing my nose a lot afterwards. And then um, of course, <laughs> seeing black just because of the dirt. Um, it just happened to be at this park that it was really um, dry over the weekend and a lot of dust came up along with the wood chips. So just bring a mask just in case and, you know, so that you can breathe and function well. All right, so that's what to bring. Hey guys, forgot to mention this, but make sure you check out their IG as well as their website to make sure that you know exactly what's prohibited and what is not prohibited to bring in. Now, what to wear? <laughs> this is really interesting. I mentioned this in the North Coast Festival um, guide that I just posted, but ARC is a little bit different. It's very similar to Lollapalooza in that it is gonna be more streetwear. It's not that much of a ravey festival. Do people get dressed up? There are a few. I would say there's a sprinkling of people who get more in the rave kind of feel and the vibe, but this festival is really a, a city festival at its core. So you're gonna see a lot of street fashion. Um, the best thing, the best way I could describe this festival is it feels like it's just a house barbecue and that's what we have in Chicago a block party if you will so it's very laid back like I could t I could go um, into arc with a t-shirt on like this and my combat boots and feel completely comfortable so it really is what you make of it how uh, dressed up you want to be versus how you don't it's all about kind of the vibe that you want to put out there. Me personally, I'm going to go for comfort this year. So I'm going to be wearing, you know, t-shirts, maybe some leggings, some biker shorts. Um, I also have bell bottoms to kind of bring the disco flair with me. I'm going to have my hair out and, you know, go really in in the accessories. So, you know, kind of feel how you know think think about how you feel um and, and go from there but i would say that there's a lot of people that are going to just be casually dressed and that's totally fine and it's actually one of the things i really enjoyed about it a lot of people who came from out of town to come to this festival for the first time last year mentioned it reminded them of going to a festival in europe where they don't really get as dressed up and it was a good thing it you know it was just nice to see an older crowd and there was no pressure to get looks or to, you know, to um, do all of that. It was really about just the vibe and 
being there for the music and that's the thing that I love about this festival so much. So now we're gonna talk about how to get in. So there are two entrances and I believe that the entrance was on the Ashland side and I'll pop up a, a view of the map here. It was on the Ashland side um, of the street um, there is a section of VIP entrance to go in which had no line so you could go back it right in and then there is the GA admission when we went there was no line I think we got there kind of later so that's probably why we got there on that Sunday around four or five and we it was a breeze to get in back then you had to be vaccinated to get in so we had to use our vaccine vaccination card show our ID get it you got a wristband for alcohol um, you showed your ticket and you went right through and they also checked your bag really quick nothing too crazy or major it was really smooth um, to get in which compared to North Coast that was an issue last year so I would say I didn't have any weight um, everyone that I know who went to ARC didn't really have a weight so you know keep that in mind but I would say you know just as a good rule of thumb thumb for every festival goer if there's someone that you want to see don't try to get there like right as they go on give yourself at least 30 minutes to an hour beforehand so that you know that you're gonna get there and you're gonna actually see the act and you're not gonna miss anything so that's just a good rule of rule of thumb that I like to follow but getting in was really easy in terms of transportation so I'm coming from out of town I live in the Chicago suburbs so when I went I drove in and I actually use the spot hero app if you don't know what spot hero is it basically will crowdsource um, parking in the area that and they'll charge you for a fee to park your car there we found this great spot it was like a covered um, parking lot and we parked our car there a few blocks away walked down over got right in and it was easy for us to get out and so this year, I will definitely be driving and using Spot Hero. That's a great way. However, you're in the middle of the city. It's on the west side. It's right next to United Center. Um, it's a little bit west of the United Center, and it's right off of the, the green and pink line stop, the Ashland pink and green stop, green line stops. So it's so, so easy to get there. So if you live in the city, or if you're staying in the city for the weekend because you're going to this festival, look at taking the green line and the the pink line um it's really fast the stop is literally at the gate you get it off you walk less than a block and it, you go right into the <laughs> right into the festival that is the sweetest part about this whole thing other modes of transportation you can take the ashland the ashland bus um, and just take your CTA buses there. There's also a bus that goes on Madison, I believe, that takes you to United Center. So you could come, if you're coming from like the lake downtown east, you could take the Madison bus to get there. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of options for you. And I think that that's the beauty about this festival is that it's very accessible. So with that being said, I will list all of the different um, buses and things that you can have here. And I'll, I should have already popped up the map. So it's very, very easy to get in. All right, so a quick overview of all the stages. So the first stage that you're gonna see is the ARC car. The ARC car is um, kind of like an ARC car where a lot of the smaller um, acts will play. And then you'll go over to expansion stage. Um, this stage is definitely an oasis. It gives you this tropical kind of jungle house vibes. Um, but there were also techno acts that played at this stage and it definitely gave you a sense of escaping from the city and kind of more of a European or even island experience. Then we head over to the grid and the grid is the main stage and it's such a great stage. It's actually one of our favorites as you can see here. Um, it's designed with these stacked steel storage containers um, which really pay homage to the Detroit um, techno scene and you can see the lights really light up along those storage containers at night it's a very beautiful stage and really great for its first year honestly and then 
Last but not least, we have the Elroy stage. So the Elroy stage is presented by Elroy, which is a global kind of like a traveling show. They do shows all across the globe, and um, it's a very immersive experience. They have um, performers, they have props, they have themes. This theme was kind of like a psychedelic 60s vibe. And they also have confetti cannons. Yes, confetti can cannons um, that will shoot off throughout the show. So it's definitely a party atmosphere. It's such a good time. If you go to ARC, you cannot miss this stage. Matter of fact, spend as much time as you can at this stage. <laughs> All right, moving into food and beverage. So the food and beverage at ARC is actually very similar to what was provided at North Coast because we have the same type of vendors. So Connie's uh, deep dish pizza was there. Um, they did have a vegan option, I believe, and they had smoothies, which was nice to see that they offered some healthier alternatives. There was falafel, which we didn't try, but it looked delicious. Um, so there is, I think there was like a couple of food trucks and then there was like a line of kind of vendors. and. And then you have uh, drinks throughout. If you do VIP, they have bars um, in the VIP section. And if you do the the like the ultra VIP, then the drinks are actually included. And I believe food is included as well. So you know, if you didn't pay for VIP, that's totally fine. There is um, you know food there available. The food was reasonably priced. I think we got pizza one day and it seemed like it was somewhere around maybe seven, eight dollars, you know, kind of what you would expect. I think everyone was kind of reacting really to the cost of the of the drinks. In my opinion, if it costs more to get a drink than it does a piece of food, like that doesn't make sense. Like make that make sense. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think people were really, you know, voicing their concerns about that last year. Um, and it sounds like ARC is gonna possibly um, answer that call this year. We'll see how it goes. I'll make sure to do a review. But I would say, you know, it, you know, costs are reasonable to probably any other festival. Make sure that you plan your budget accordingly. And also, they do have merch on site. I um, bought a shirt, and it's one of the most comfortable shirts that I own. I wear it out, I wear it to bed. The material is so soft. It has to be a blend, it can't just be cotton. But it is so, so comfortable. I bought it extra large, and I'm glad that I did that. Um, the design is really cool, it's futuristic. Um, you know, it's something that you could wear in your everyday life and, and be cool with it, but also you could wear it to the show so I'm definitely buying merch I think the shirt that I bought was like oh it had to be between 35 to 45 and they also had hats and they had um, some hoodies and things of that nature so plan accordingly I know they also offered some merch online after the fact so if you can't buy it there there is an option However, due to some supply issues because of COVID, there were some delays if you ordered online. So if you can, try to get it while you're there so you don't have to worry about that all after. Last but not least, how to plan your day. To be honest with you, the beauty about ARC Music Festival that I love so much about this festival compared to others is that you can split sets. The sets are long. As the day goes on, they get even longer. We're talking about an hour and a half to two hour sets. So you can go to an artist, see part of their set, switch to another artist and come back again. We did that with um, Eric Pritz. We actually saw like the first half of Eric Pritz, went to go see Hot Since 82 for a little bit, went back to Prids and ended our night there. So that's the beauty about ARC. Plus the park, Union Park, where it's held, is not that big, so you can easily get around. There is some sound bleed, unfortunately, because of that, but the only sound bleed that I found the most noticeable was at the ARC car, um, and that's where like the smaller DJs are. When you're standing there in certain areas, you definitely can hear the bleed, but other than that, I didn't have any issues between the grid and the L row stage, which is where we spend the most of our time. Then you have expansions, and I couldn't really hear what was going on behind, behind me at those other stages, so it wasn't too, too bad. 
That being said, in terms of planning your day, I would say like explore. Try and try to see even those smaller house artists. Try to split some of your sets because they're so long. Like really take advantage of the fact that you're able to truly immerse yourself in the music and get a feel for the different types of techno and house because the sets are longer. So that's how I would say I would plan my day out. In terms of leaving the festival, it's super, super easy. It's probably one of the smoothest <laughs> exits of a festival I've ever been to, which is crazy because it's such a tiny park. But everyone was nice, no one was pushing. Everyone got out. People went on the, the um, onto the uh, pink and green line and then the buses and you know, we walked to our car and that was all she wrote. So I didn't have any issues getting out. So. I hope that you found this video helpful. I am so excited to see you all at ARC and just being back in the place that I love. This is the essence of Chicago and the Chicago dance community. I'm so proud that this festival is there and I'm excited for people to experience it. If you've never been to a Chicago event or you've never experienced Chicago House, this is the event to go. We are doing a Pella Ravers meetup, so if you'd like to meet up at Arc Music Festival, make sure that you follow Pella Ravers and it's at Pella Ravers on IG. That's um, our Facebook page on Facebook, so you can check out all the deets there and we'll have the Pella Ravers flag and we're gonna all vibe out on one of the days. We haven't decided which one, but if you follow those pages, you'll get more info. Hope that you found this video helpful. Um, are you going to Art Music Festival? If you are, who are you excited to see? Drop down below. If you have any questions for me about Chicago, getting around, going to Art Music Festival, make sure you comment those below and I will respond um, with my answers. You can also check me out on IG at Or life with ash if you um, want more tips or if you want to follow along with me for the weekend um, if you like this video make sure you give a thumbs up make sure you click that subscribe button to get more Chicago music festival event information from me I love you guys so much and as I always say positive self positive wealth bye